What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again with another Latte Panda 3 video and in this one we're going to be adding an external GPU to this x86 single board computer. Now if you're not familiar with the Latte Panda line of SBCs, the last one was released about three years ago, but a few days ago as making this video they released number three. This is known as the Latte Panda 3 Delta. I've made one video checking it out without an external GPU and it's a decent little x86 single board computer but we can definitely get more out of it with a dedicated GPU connected. Unfortunately, these don't support Thunderbolt, so the only way to get an external GPU working with this is over an M.2 slot, and luckily we do have two on this unit. We've got one M2B key, which supports PCIe 3.01X, and the other is an M.2 M key, really made for an NVMe SSD, but it's running at PCIe 3.02X. So I opted to populate the other one with an SSD, it's just a SATA M.2, and we're going to be connecting a GTX 1650 to the M key slot here. If you're interested in seeing what this board can do all by itself, I will leave a link to the first video I created, but I did want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we've got the Intel Celeron N5105. 4 cores, no extra threads, up to 2.9 GHz. Obviously, we've got an iGPU, which is an Intel UHD with 24 EUs, but we're not going to be utilizing it in this video. 8 GB of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2,933 MHz. Onboard 64 GB eMMC version 5.1. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this will support Windows and Linux, but we're going to be running Windows 11 in this video. So now I'm going to show you how I'll get this all connected. Now there are several ways to go about this. There's a bunch of different adapters that you can pick up online to get this working. M.2 to PCIe X16 or even PCIe X4. It's really up to you. And most of the time I would go with a super small form factor build with like a Pico power supply. But for this, I'm going to use one of my favorite adapters, the ADT Link R3G. So this is a bit expensive on Amazon, but you can pick them up pretty cheap on AliExpress. We can power this from an ATX power supply, or we can use a Dell 24 pin power supply, and that's how I'm going to be doing it in this video. But yeah, I mean, this does make it really easy to connect an eGPU to anything with an M.2 slot. And basically, what we're going to do here is plug the GPU into the dock itself, and then we'll insert the M.2 end into our free slot on the Latte Panda 3. And from here, I will be powering the Panda separately from the GPU. Unfortunately, it's just not going to put out enough power over that M.2 to power this GTX 1650. So I've got a 24-pin Dell power supply that'll plug right into the dock itself. And I could rig something up to also power the Panda from it. But for this one here, I just want to get it going and see if it would be worth doing in the first place. I could always just leave it laying on the table like this, but I kind of wanted to get everything as compact as possible and make it look pretty decent. So I'm actually going to be mounting the Panda right on the front of the GPU here or the dock itself. Pretty easy to do. I've got a lot of these standoffs, got a bunch of these laying around, and I could definitely figure something out to get it looking pretty decent and a nice little compact form factor. And after fiddling around with it for a little while, I came up with something like this. Not too bad. I mean, it's definitely a nice little compact design, and that GPU is basically open air, so I'm not worried about blocking off that other fan. I've done a little bit of testing so far, and it's not going to get hot at all. But yeah, with something like this, I can access all of the ports on the Panda and the ports on the GPU, and personally, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm ready to start testing here. Remember, the GPU is running over the free M.2 slot, and in turn, we're going to have the video coming out of the GTX 1650 to the monitor. And as soon as I plugged everything in and booted it up the first time, it detected the GPU. All I had to do was download the drivers. And here it is. So as you can see, we've got that Celeron N5105, four cores up to 2.9 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of LPDDR4, and unfortunately, this is running in single channel out of the box. We can also access the built-in Intel UHD graphics, but we're not going to be using these because we've got the GTX 1650 attached to this unit. So I've done a little bit of stress testing so far just to make sure everything's stable. And I was able to run some benchmarks and boot up a ton of different games here. But one thing I'm noticing is this GPU is actually only running in X1 mode. So PCIe 3.0 X1 and the slot is supposed to be an X2 slot, and I know for a fact that my adapter will support X2, it'll actually support up to X4, but unfortunately, it's only showing up as X1, and I also tested an RTX 3060 just to make sure, and it's doing the exact same thing. 
But either way you look at it, this will offer better GPU performance, so I want to jump right into some gaming, then we'll run a couple benchmarks, and then move back over to some more PC games. Okay, so starting off light here, we've got Left 4 Dead. This is one I tested on the internal GPU, and I did have to go down to medium settings, 720p, but here we're maxed out at 1080, and I know that the GTX 1650 can handle it, but we are connected in a weird way here, so we're not getting the full performance out of it but we can get well over 80 FPS on average with this one. Next up, we've got the original Skyrim, and on the internal GPU, it will play this game at low settings, 720p, and it does a decent job. We get a couple dips under 60 with it set up like that, but it is playable. But with the GTX 1650 attached, ultra settings, 1080p, running at a constant 60. So yeah, I know these are older games, and that's really one of the big reasons I tested them first, but now I want to take a look at a couple benchmarks that I ran on this thing. So first up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife with no external GPU. These are the integrated graphics on this little N5105. We got a total score of 2,381. And as soon as I connected the GTX 1650 and ran this same benchmark again, we went from 2,381 to 22,450. So yeah, major jump in GPU performance. Our CPU performance obviously is going to stay the same. And with the next benchmark here, I just ran it with the GTX 1650 because I knew the internal graphics were really going to struggle. We got a total score of 7,026 with 3D Mark Firestrike. Another one that worked really well with this little setup here was Street Fighter V, where at maximum settings, 1080p, no resolution scale going on, and we're running at 60. I mean, this is a great little experience here. But again, this is an easier one to run. I know for sure that the GTX 1650 running in normal mode can run this at maximum settings, and as you can see, connected over M.2 with this lower-end CPU, it can also run it at full speed. But I want to test out some newer AAA games to see what's really going on. And here's God of War, 720p, low, and you know, I really didn't expect it to do a great job with these newer games, given the CPU performance and RAM. That's what's going to hold us back in a lot of the newer AAA stuff, the system RAM. So we've only got 8 gigs there, and we've got 4 gigs of VRAM. And not to mention, we've maxed out all 4 cores here on that N5105. They're running at 100%, and the max clock we can get out of all 4 cores at the same time is about 2.8 gigahertz on this CPU. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, and I really did think we'd get a little better out of it with this. So I thought something was going on, and I actually wanted to test another GPU, so we'll take a look at that next. But this is really coming down to that low-end CPU and our RAM. So again, we've only got 8 gigs of system RAM, and if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, we're basically using all the RAM we have right now with the Latte Panda 3. But I still wanted to see what that game would do with a higher-end GPU connected, so I opted to use an RTX 3060. It's a non-TI variant. We're connected in the exact same way. And yeah, we did get a little better performance, but not in the long run. We're still going to get those dips under 20 due to that system RAM just being totally maxed out. But this RTX 3060 does seem to perform better, and you know, in real-world performance, this card is more powerful than the GTX 1650. But there was still one more newer game that I wanted to test with the GTX 1650, and that's Spider-Man Remastered. So at first, I was able to get this to boot up, I was able to get it into game, and performance definitely isn't great. I wanted to go back with the RTX 3060, but unfortunately, every time it got into game, no matter what I did, the game would crash on me, so there was no way that I could test it with the RTX 3060. But luckily, I did get this footage from the GTX 1650. And yeah, it's not great. We're at the lowest of the low, 720p, and you can see, I mean, we're down in the teens right now. Not exactly sure what's going on with it, but I do wish I could go back and retest this game with a different GPU. So overall, yeah, definitely up the GPU performance of the Latte Panda 3, but you know, we're still working with a limited amount of RAM here and a really low-end CPU when you consider it for gaming. Now this board by itself actually does pretty good with older games at 720p, 
and connecting something like this will allow you to up that resolution, but it's not great for newer AAA games as you saw in this video, and I really didn't expect it to be. This was something that I wanted to do. I did it with the original Latte Panda. We saw some great performance increase there, and here we also got a nice little bump in performance. Now, would I recommend going out and buying one of these, a dock and a GPU, specifically to set this up? No. I would build a desktop PC or pick up a small form factor Ryzen APU powered mini PC if you're looking to do 720p gaming. And I do want to mention it again, the Latte Panda 3 was never meant to be a gaming machine. This is a little hacker board, you know, for robotics and things like that. But this was something that I definitely wanted to test and I know some of my viewers were interested in seeing this. So there we have it. If you want to check out my original video on the Latte Panda 3 all by itself with no external GPU, link for that is in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this board, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.